How many times have I said it so far? My favorite thing about the Naruto series has always been the Dojutsu, my favorite in particular being the Sharingan line. But unlike many, I was never super big on the Rinnegan, with my favorite Dojutsu being the Mangekyo Sharingan and its Eternal variant. The way it was achieved, the variability between designs and abilities, it just made each Mangekyo special. And it was also the Dojutsu that came with the Susano technique, something the Rinnegan did not. Regardless, this story has evolved into a story of rivalry between Naruto and Sasuke, and their rivalry takes the form of a debate between whether the Rinnegan is better than the Sharingan. And today I plan to answer that question with as much creativity as I can muster. So please, join me as we gaze into the moon of the infinite Tsukiyomi, and let us view a world where Naruto had the Rinnegan. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check that you're subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Sasuke stood over his sink looking into the mirror. It had been about a week since their return to the village, and they were still taking it easy. Their jobs had returned to the painfully simple, but what was noticed was that people were filing into the village from all over. Kakashi had told them that this was the Chunin exams, and Team 7, due to their bravery, were allowed by the 4th Hokage to partake in these exams. Sasuke had only this afternoon signed up for them with Naruto, but all the while Sasuke looked into the mirror at his Mangekyo Sharingan with curiosity. Was this the power of the Sharingan? The power he believed could overtake the Rinnegan? How had it formed? Why did this variant exist like this? It almost seemed like a pure biological response. So what was this? Was this the need arising and forcing an awakening, or was it more? Even during war, when those who possessed the Sharingan were in danger, they couldn't just reawaken the Mangekyo. So what had forced this awakening? Sasuke had grown interested in this new dojutsu he had only heard rumors about. It was considered the crown jewel of the Uchiha. While not exactly mythical by any means, it was indeed legendary, and had become the symbol for true Uchiha power. As Sasuke looked at them, he heard his mother call him for dinner. Sasuke called down to her that he was coming before washing his hands as he had meant to do before. Making his way downstairs, his mother would put a plate on the table. Fugaku, at the head of the table, was ready, and Itachi was only now just getting home. Makoto would sit down at the table with her plate as Itachi finished washing his hands. He came to sit. They gave thanks for their meal and began to eat. As they did, however, an unusual silence hung over the table and Sasuke began to notice. As if Fugaku sensed Sasuke's awareness, Fugaku decided to cut to the chase. I noticed a few of my books were missing today. Sasuke sat silently. Which ones? The ones on the Sharingan, the anatomy and the awakenings of it, Fugaku said. Oh, yeah, I took those, father. I hope that's all right. Fugaku chuckled a little. Son, if you wanted to, I'd give you those books. I'm perfectly all right with you borrowing them, but the reason I bring this up is because I wanted to know if there's a reason for it. You see, Fugaku was well informed, and very little happened within the Uchiha that he didn't know about. He read every report from every mission an Uchiha was on, and upon reading the debriefing on Sasuke's mission, he had come to realize the truth. He wanted to hear it from Sasuke, though. Sasuke began to speak. I've been trying to understand the Sharingan and the Mangekyo variant. On the last mission, I understood everything and saw the Shinobi world for what it was for the very first time. It opened my eyes. I awakened my Mangekyo Sharingan. An unusual pause came over the dinner table. Sasuke looked around. Fugaku smiled. I knew this day would come, he said. It's always a painful change, but the awakening of your Mangekyo is proof of your development in both heart and body. And now your desire to read my books is development of mind. You're getting stronger. You make me prouder and prouder every day, Sasuke. Even if he never said it, Sasuke really needed to hear that right now. For so long, he had felt inadequate, and now he was beginning to feel as if he were finally becoming the son that Fugaku wanted. It was everything he could do to choke away tears. Fugaku put his hand on Sasuke's shoulder. After dinner, I'd like to show you something. Fugaku had brought Sasuke and Itachi together out to the forest. They walked by the river until a small shrine came into view. Entering it, they found a stone tablet. Sasuke found that with his Sharingan and his Mangekyo, he could read more of it than he could with the naked eye. It spoke of the Sage of Six Paths and the Rinnegan. What is this stone tablet, father? Sasuke asked. It's our inheritance from our ancestor, the Sage of Six Paths. He designed it so that it could not be read by anyone but the Uchiha. It's viewable only by those who have his dojutsu, and that would be us. He put his hand on Sasuke's shoulder. I brought you here for a reason, with your brother. Fugaku turned to Itachi and nodded. They both looked down at Sasuke. Sasuke was startled to see that both Fugaku and Itachi had Mangekyo Sharingan. 
Fugaku knelt down to Sasuke's level. With these eyes, you will only grow stronger and stronger, Sasuke. I have so many questions, father, Sasuke said. How does the Sharingan actually work? What makes the Mongekyo? Fugaku laughed and began to explain. The Sharingan was awakened by determination, as many powerful jutsu are. But it's only through pain that we awaken the Mongekyo. Emotions have a powerful connection with our chakra and can change its composition. During times of great sorrow, when love becomes hate, our chakra changes. And when it changes, it alters its physical state, which causes the Mongekyo to awaken its true form. The Sharingan evolves based upon the chakra that flows into it. Just because hate flows through the eye does not mean we have to succumb to it. Our pain is our greatest weapon, one we wield out of sight until the time that it's required. With this power, if you learn to control it, you will become one of the strongest shinobi of all. All the while, Naruto was sleeping cozy in bed. He had craved so much to get out of the village for a mission, and that itch was adequately scratched. But now he gave zero craps about leaving the village and was content to stay here for a while. Being thrust into a life or death situation had caused him to become far more appreciative of the personal peace he'd discovered here. Kushina would watch him sleep before going downstairs and resting on the couch with Minato. Naruto's received more high marks. His mentor praised his actions during his time out of the village. He thinks it would be a shame to allow him to remain as a genin. He says he's halfway to Jonin by now. Minato shook his head with a smile. What are we gonna do about that boy? I'm gonna have to start training again or he'll be coming for my job. I read the report as well. Did you notice that Sasuke got high marks too? Minato nodded. Both of them did, which is why Team 7 is officially signed up for the Chunin exams tomorrow. I'm interested to see what Naruto can do. The sun was up bright and early, just as Team 7 was. They stood there alone outside the building where the Chunin exams would take place. Naruto and Sasuke were both very excited, their rivalry shining bright. You better watch out, Naruto. The Sharingan has once again evolved, its potential's expanding. Soon, your Rinnegan won't be able to catch up. Naruto laughed at that. We'll see, Sasuke. Entering in, they were brought to a room where they could take another test. This time, Naruto and Sasuke were paying close attention to see if there was a hidden answer anywhere, but there wasn't so far. They were given a lot of time, but looking at the paper, they found only painfully few questions. There was only one sheet, and it was only one-sided. But as the time began, Naruto realized that each question was insanely hard. There was no way that he could solve these. Many Jonin couldn't even solve these. Naruto was hard-pressed to say that even his father could solve these. There had to be a trick to it. These questions were absurd. Then it became apparent to Naruto and Sasuke that the goal was to cheat, and the two began to utilize their dojutsu to do so. This, they assumed, was the thing that they were supposed to do, as getting caught cheating only docked points. It didn't get you disqualified outright. Naruto and Sasuke would finish their questions quickly, but they realized at the bottom of the test there was a place to add another long answer, but there was no question. They wondered what this meant. As time came to a close, the proctor demanded that all pencils be put down. When they were, they were told that a final question would be asked, and only those who could actually solve it would be allowed to continue. Those who quit would be out of the exams, and those who failed to answer correctly would be delegated to the Genin rank for the rest of their lives. Naruto and Sasuke were both startled by this, but their confidence was good enough that they were sure that they could handle anything that came their way. And so, they decided to take the question, which by default proved to be the right answer. With this, Team 7 got to move on to Round 2, which was a deadly game of Capture the Flag in the Forest of Death, so named for the number the training ground had, number 44. While many didn't realize this, the word 4 in Japanese was Shi, the same word that they had for death. And given that this name had twice the number of fours in it, it likely meant that there was twice as much danger here than anywhere else. And whether it was prophetic due to the actions of those taking care of it, or whether it was just luck, the forest was dangerous. One of the most dangerous places in the village. In fact, the test they were about to take was so dangerous that each shinobi continuing the test was forced to sign a waiver that absolved Konoha of any liability caused by death or bodily harm that occurred due to the forest itself, or the other examinees. Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura were ready to go in. Due to their dojutsu, Naruto and Sasuke were planned to be some of the heaviest hitters, and were expected to be the ones to come in first. As soon as the gates were opened and the test began, each member of Team 7 was allowed in. From there, Naruto and Sasuke turned on their dojutsu, hoping to find their targets soon. They had the Heaven Scroll, which was one of two types of scroll. They needed the other scroll to pass the test, so they were searching for the Scroll of Earth. As they did so, they were rushing, keeping their eyes open for targets. 
However, they weren't being as attentive as they should have been, and the fact that the Sharingan wasn't a Byakugan became apparent when a giant centipede came out of nowhere and knocked them to the ground. They all sat there in a daze. Sakura rolled over. She was still conscious, but Naruto was hardly conscious at all. I mean, if he was, he wasn't responding to his name when Sasuke called it out. This meant that Sasuke was the one needing to defend them. It was then that Sasuke summoned his Susano, bearing a weapon, its purple chakra covering them. At this point, it was hardly more than a partial skeleton covering them all, but it possessed a sword at least. As the centipede came around, it clashed with his Susano. Sasuke grunted as blood dripped from his eyes. It felt like every cell was on fire when he was using this technique. He knew he couldn't keep it up for long, so he coated the Susano's blade with a Matarasu to ensure that all he had to do was strike the beast once to deal a fatal blow. He readied his blade as the creature came in. As it reached him, he struck out at it and severed it in two, with the flames jumping from his sword to the creature's body, causing it to burn. As the beast died, Sasuke let his Susano go and fell to his knees. By this time, Naruto was awake again. Sakura ran to Sasuke and knelt down next to him. Sasuke, are you okay? He looked to her with a bit of a tired look in his eye. He nodded. I'm fine. She would then take a handkerchief and wipe the blood from his cheeks. They would move to a location to allow Sasuke to rest. It was obvious that he was tired from using his Susano, and so they gave him something to eat, one of the packed lunches they brought with them, and gave him plenty of water. After about 45 minutes, he was back on his feet again. Together, they continued their search. No more than 15 minutes later did they find an unsuspecting group with an earth scroll. Naruto and Sasuke would use their dojutsu to cast genjutsu over the members. They would replace their earth scroll with a rolled up banana leaf and convince them that it was their scroll. They would then leave without so much as anyone knowing that they were there. No more than 20 minutes after that, they were back at the center of the forest. Entering the facility, they would be met by Kakashi, who would congratulate them. 1 hour, 19 minutes, 26 seconds. That's a new record if I'm not mistaken. Sasuke nodded. It is. My brother set the last one. Sadly, we could have done even better than this if we didn't hit a snag with a centipede. Kakashi clicked his tongue in disappointment. But even though that happened, it's still impressive. After all, you broke the record by a country mile. So take the dub and get some rest. And they did just that. It wasn't long after that that the round 3 exhibition matches would begin. In this match, Sasuke was pitted against Rock Lee. Sasuke couldn't keep up physically with Rock Lee, but he did have his partial Susano to cover him and protect him. But even then, it seemed like the Susano was beginning to crack a little as Lee continued to strike him. Sasuke attempted to use Amaterasu to bring Lee down, planning to extinguish the flames before they caused too much damage with Kagatsuchi. But Lee was fast. Sasuke was required to continue using Susano to defend himself and attack. Eventually, he got lucky and managed to grab Lee before smashing him into the ground. This resulted in Sasuke's victory. Naruto was forced to face off against Gara in his match, and with the power of the Rinnegan, there was hardly anything Gara could do. Even his absolute defense was no match for the Rinnegan's power. Gara would soon go down as well, resulting in Naruto's victory. After the first match, the Chunin exams were paused, and the attendees were allowed to have a month off for training, most of which Naruto spent with his father. Sasuke, on the other hand, returned home. As he did, he would sit on the front porch, rubbing his eyes. He would grab a pair of glasses to help him read. Itachi would come out of the house and see this. Oh, is something wrong, Sasuke? Sasuke looked up at him. I love the Mangekyo Sharingan. It finally seems to display the potential to beat the Rinnegan, but it's so fleeting. It takes up so much stamina to use, and now I can already tell that it's starting to hurt my vision. I'm getting nervous that my body's gonna give out before I even get to Naruto's level. Itachi nodded and sat down. You know, Sasuke... There is a way to alleviate these issues. Sasuke looked over. What? Itachi looked to him. Remember when father said that the Sharingan reacts to chakra? Well, there is another evolution that we know of after this. It's called the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. It can only be achieved when two Mangekyo Sharingan users of close blood relation trade Sharingan. In doing so, the Mangekyo Sharingan will once again mutate and give you access to your abilities with less stamina drain, and you won't go blind from using them. Sasuke was amazed. Wow, that's wonderful. I'd love to have that, he said as if the most beautiful piece of candy were dangled in front of his face. His smile faded as he slowly pulled back. I mean, only if you were willing to. Itachi smiled. To be honest, I've wanted one since the day I awakened my Mangekyo, knowing what would happen if I overused it. If you want, we could try. I'm sure that father would approve. Sasuke smiled. Let's do it then. Now, I'll pause for just a moment and explain something. In the past, I've heard people say that merely swapping eyes doesn't work, and, and one can only get the Eternal Mangekyo because of absorption or something like that. Well, I'm here to say that that's actually unconfirmed. 
The only thing to my knowledge that supports this theory is a panel or two that shows a figure with four Sharingan instead of two. And I believe Itachi had that same panel, but had two empty slots where an additional set of Sharingan could go. Now, these two panels are up for interpretation, as we're never specifically told that they absorb the Sharingan. All we know is that the recipient removes the Mangekyo and transplants it. So to say that only one can achieve the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan this way, unless I'm mistaken, is technically headcanon, which isn't a bad thing, because literally everything in this what if is fun headcanon. And so I'm just saying this so y'all understand the logic behind my choice. I don't claim to be an expert like many others, but this is just my own personal opinion. And I also very much am telling a fun story, so don't expect everything to be perfectly accurate. Love you. All right, back to the story. After the month has passed by, the group was allowed to return to the Chunin exams where they were all ready. Naruto and Sasuke continued to face off against opponents until they both were declared to be the two greatest shinobi in the exams. And this would ultimately lead to the confrontation of a lifetime. They ended up in the finals together, where the two were planning to go as far as possible against each other. Naruto stood there directly opposite Sasuke and smiled, his Rinnegan glowing. This match has been a long time coming, Sasuke. Are you ready? Sasuke smiled as he displayed his Mangekyo. I've been ready for a while. Naruto looked at him curiously for a moment. I can't put my finger on it, but something's changed. The two patterns in Sasuke's Mangekyo Sharingan began to spin. The Mangekyo was incomplete. Only with Itachi's help did I manage to complete the Mangekyo Sharingan and master it. I plan to show you exactly how strong the Sharingan is, and I'll show you exactly why it's superior to the Rinnegan. Naruto scoffed. The Rinnegan is the most reputed of all dojutsu. Your dojutsu came from mine. It's watered down. You think it really stands a chance? Sasuke nodded. I do. The Sharingan is also stated to be one of the three most reputed dojutsu. Our two dojutsu are of the same family. Yet our two dojutsu separately are each counted as one of three venerated eyes. Just because mine is descended from yours, don't assume it can't keep up. Naruto let out a bit of a laugh. I love it. That's the spirit. I'm looking forward to seeing the progress you've made, Sasuke. I'm beginning to believe what you say holds water. Show me the potential of your new variant. Sasuke nodded. I will. Prepare yourself and behold the power of the kaleidoscope copy wheel eye that will never lose its light. The eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. In the Hokage's box, Minato Namikaze sat. By his side, he had invited Fugaku Uchiha to view the battle with him. Your son's abilities have far exceeded my expectations, Fugaku, Minato said. I'm impressed. Fugaku looked to his village's leader. He has only been pushed to come this far because of your son's rivalry with him. Your son is strong and the rumors that he is the Sage of Six Paths reborn. It's truly an honor for me to have my child on the same team as yours, Lord Forth. Minato laughed. We're alone right now, Fugaku. We're friends. Feel free to drop the honorifics. Let's enjoy this match as two fathers would. Fugaku laughed a bit. All right, Minato. The head of the Uchiha clan looked down upon the match, and a grin drew upon his cheeks. He then looked back. Hey, Minato, how about a friendly bet? Minato's eyes lit up for a moment. Oh, a bet. What is it? Fugaku looked down on the battle. I bet that my son Sasuke can beat your son. An interesting bet, Fugaku, but no bet is complete without the ante. What do I get when Naruto wins? Fugaku sat there for a moment. When Sasuke wins, you will treat me and my family to a wonderful dinner at your home. And should Naruto beat Sasuke somehow, how about you come to my family's home? We'll cook up the best we can. Minato stood from his seat and walked to the window to look out as well. He offered his hand to Fugaku. I accept the terms of the bet. Fugaku shook Minato's hand. The two then began to watch from the window intently. Naruto looked back at the box. Looks like our dads are interested. Sasuke looked up and around. Looks like everyone's interested. Naruto nodded. Let's not keep them waiting, shall we? Naruto lowered into a fighting stance. Let's not. Sasuke also lowered down. Suddenly they rushed at each other. The two of them were starting off simple, nothing but taijutsu. A test to see who was better with their techniques. Both boys had picked up many just by watching others, but Sasuke's strikes, while not as powerful as Naruto's due to having less chakra in reserve, were more precise. He, after his battle with Rock Lee, Sasuke had been training to do something. Despite how much he was working on this, he still couldn't do anything like Lee, but all the same, he managed to open up the first gate. Gate of opening! Rock Lee from the stands stood up when he saw it. He did it! He lured the first gate! Mike Guy smiled and nodded in approval. Lee called out to Sasuke from the stands. Go get him, Sasuke! With this extra boost in power, Sasuke was ready to go on the offensive again. He had to be careful, though. He had needed to push Naruto into a corner. 
Sasuke rushed forward. Naruto summoned Shadow Clones to attack Sasuke from all angles, but Sasuke, however, turned and began striking out, kicking and punching before any of the clones got close. He, he could admit when Sasuke had overtaken him in something, and he was impressed that Sasuke, as of right now, surpassed him in Taijutsu. It was time to switch to Ninjutsu. Naruto would take out a group of kunai and throw it at Sasuke, which Sasuke would barely dodge. Naruto would then begin to form a Rasengan. Sasuke saw this and would attempt a great fireball jutsu to stop Naruto's attack. As Naruto rushed towards the flames, Sasuke would pour chakra into his flames. Naruto would suddenly use the flying Raijin jutsu to teleport to one of the kunai that landed behind Sasuke. He then rushed to Sasuke with his Rasengan. Sasuke only barely managed to detect it. He put up a Susanoo ribcage to protect him as it was all he could do at the time. Naruto smashed his Rasengan into the ribcage which then exploded. The ribcage withstood the shot, but Sasuke was still knocked back because of the way the Rasengan worked. He hit the ground and began to sit up. Now he had to admit that Naruto knew more ninjutsu than he, and he had a deeper well of chakra than him as well. As for Genjutsu, they were both in a dead tie, so what was left? Dojutsu. How about we just get to the main event already, Naruto? Naruto smiled. I thought you would never ask. Naruto would attempt to use the diva path to strike Sasuke, but Sasuke put up his Susano to catch the brunt of the attack. At this point, he had already evolved it to its armored state. Sasuke would rush forward with the Susano on top of him the whole time. Naruto began to move back. Using the diva path, he rose into the air and would use the Ashura path to fire down missiles at Sasuke. Sasuke would use the Amaterasu to cause the missiles to self-destruct before they could even get there. Naruto would fly to the other end of the arena and would summon various beasts with his animal path. There was a Cerberus and a Centipede. The two rushed at Sasuke, but Sasuke had experience with a centipede. He would coat his Susanoo's blade in a Matarasu and would proceed to slice the centipede to ribbons. The Cerberus was next. It attacked Sasuke, but its teeth could not get through the thick armor. Sasuke effortlessly pushed the blade of his Susanoo into the throat of one of the heads of the Cerberus. The other head roared as the first went limp. Sasuke would then finish it off with the Matarasu. Naruto saw this and began to wonder if this Susanoo truly was indestructible, even to the Rinnegan. He would begin to take census of his abilities and the powers that the Rinnegan afforded him. He came to the conclusion that he might be able to beat it if he got close. And so, he summoned his multi-shadow clones and more of his animal summons. They rushed the Susanoo. The animals weren't really to do damage, but to serve as a distraction as Naruto and his clones drew closer. Just as predicted, it worked. Naruto began to use the Predapath to absorb the chakra of the Susanoo. Sasuke could feel himself and his Susanoo being weakened. He attempted to turn his attention towards the Shadow Clones of Naruto, but as he destroyed each one, it would be replaced by two more. They would continue on unless Sasuke could find and knock back the real Naruto. But sadly, he couldn't manage to find him. He wondered if the real Naruto were even anywhere near his Susanoo's range. And suddenly, the Susanoo dissipated. Naruto's Shadow Clones rushed forward, grabbing one and spinning it around by the arm to give it momentum. The clone was thrown and put a Rasengan right into Sasuke's chest, knocking him back against the wall. Sasuke hit the ground unconscious, and Naruto was declared the winner. But to be honest, Naruto was surprised with how much fight Sasuke had put up. It seemed that the Rinnegan was still superior to the Sharingan, though. Minato let out a sigh of relief. That was close. I was afraid that Naruto would lose for a moment there. That Susanoo truly is something else. Fugaku sat there for a moment. Get a medical team out there to check on Sasuke. Sasuke would be carted off the field. Naruto watched this and felt bad. His victory was tainted by the bitterness of having hurt his best friend, but all in all, the whole team, due to their strength they displayed, were upgraded to Chunin. And just as promised, that night, Fugaku's family had Naruto's over as a treat. Minato would knock on the door, and Fugaku would open it. Welcome! Come in, Lord Forth! Minato would step in, followed by Kushina and Naruto. He would close the door behind and sit down at the table where they would often eat. Makoto would come up with a fresh pot of tea and would ask them if they wanted any. Minato and Kushina took them up on some, though Naruto didn't. He wasn't the biggest fan of tea anyway. That was a wonderful match earlier, Fugaku said. Minato nodded. It had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. Fugaku then looked to Naruto. You must be very proud. You did very well today. Naruto offered a slight bow of thanks. I am. Thank you. Sasuke should be proud too. The battle truly impressed me, and I feel like I'm going to have to double down on my training just to keep an advantage. Fugaku smiled. It was at about that time that Sasuke came down the steps. He wasn't really dressed up as neatly as the rest, but that was okay. After all, he was supposed to be resting right now due to the fight's conclusion being a bit more brutal than he expected. Fugaku looked back. Ah, Sasuke, you decided to come down after all. You know I said it would be okay for you to stay up and rest, right? Sasuke nodded. Yes, but I didn't feel like sleeping, and the smell of the food made me hungry. Fugaku motioned Sasuke down and to a pillow right beside him. 
He would then pull Sasuke into an embrace. And for the first time in a while, Sasuke felt as if he could call himself his father's pride and joy. And for that reason alone, he came down the stairs. Naruto looked to Sasuke, whose head was still bandaged up, his left arm and right leg bandaged a little. Are you okay? Naruto asked with genuine concern. Sasuke nodded. Yeah, just a little bruised here and there, a slight concussion. Naruto looked down. I'm sorry, Sasuke. I didn't mean to hurt you this much. I just felt like I needed to go all out to actually beat you. Sasuke chuckled a bit. It's fine, Naruto. Honestly, it's the same I would have done to you. And it's a great honor to me that you had to go as far as you did just to beat me. It brings me pride. Your son is very gracious, Minato said to Fugaku. And yours is very humble, Lord Forth. It gives me hope for the upcoming generation. They will surpass their parents in strength of body, mind, and heart. It was then that Itachi walked in, still wearing his Anbu armor. Ah, Itachi, welcome back. Itachi waved. I'm going to be off for a quick shower. I'll be back as soon as I can. Itachi went up the steps by increments of two. And so the group sat there and enjoyed dinner, talking about old times and new alike, talking about the state of the world, and even going so far as to spark a rivalry over their children. It was then that a slightly snockered Fugaku asked the question that nobody expected. So when's the next kid coming, Minato? Minato and Kushina both looked to each other with a blush. We haven't decided if we want one yet. Fugaku laughed. Well, you better hurry. There's only a short window for it, you know. Makoto elbowed Fugaku in the ribs. Ow! Hey! Makoto looked over at the Hokage and his wife. Please forgive him. He's a bit of a happy drunk. He says whatever's on his mind without filter. Kushina smiled and looked at Minato. My Minato's the same way. Minato blushed a bit. He then grabbed another sake glass. He raised it. To our inability to maintain common sense when hammered. Fugaku raised his glass. What he said. Itachi was already sitting up against the wall by the stairs, having seemingly fallen asleep. Naruto and Sasuke were outside on the porch, just sitting in front of a fire pit. Sasuke looked up toward the stars. I almost had you, you know. Naruto shrugged. I've got to admit, you had me nervous for a second there. That's Susano. I'm going to have to study more Six Paths techniques. There's got to be a counter to it. Sasuke scoffed with a smile. You know something, Naruto? I achieved the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan because I heard that it was the pinnacle of Uchiha power. Yeah, that's what I heard, Naruto said. But I guess today settles it. The Rinnegan is just superior to the Sharingan. That Susano of yours is powerful, but the Rinnegan will have a technique to counter it soon, I'm certain. Sasuke shook his head. I don't exactly think so. Naruto looked over. What, you don't think the Rinnegan is a counter to the Susano? Sasuke shook his head. No, I mean, I don't think today proved that the Rinnegan is better. Naruto listened, intent to hear what he had to say. Sasuke continued. I sense more potential buried deeper than the Sharingan. I don't understand it, but I get the feeling that there's more than this. More than the Mangekyo Sharingan. I feel like there's more. A new evolution. Naruto scoffed. Well, of course there is. It's called the Rinnegan. Sasuke shook his head. No, I don't mean that. That's not something that comes after the Sharingan. That's what it's evolved from, not what it evolves to. I mean, I feel like there's more potential in the Sharingan alone. Naruto raised a brow. So what? You think there's some super Mangekyo Sharingan waiting in the wings? Sasuke looked down into the flames. There's so much about the Sharingan we don't know. So much that it can do that we can't explain. But I'm certain that there's more to it than the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. I sense an ultimate Sharingan waiting just beyond the veil. Sasuke looked to Naruto. When I discover this Sharingan, we're going to have a rematch. And when we do, I'm going to kick your ass. Naruto smiled. I welcome it then, Sasuke. Go find your ultimate Sharingan. I'll be ready. And that's where I want to take a break for today. I had originally planned to try and end the story in this part, but I felt as if it would be a disservice to the story so far to end it so quickly, especially when I have so many cool ideas and places to take this. I'm hoping to drop a fourth part soon for y'all. If you want to see that, be certain to tell us about it in the comments below. Let us know what you want to see and what you think this ultimate Sharingan should be. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when new content like this is dropped. And also be sure to check out these other cool videos that we've made. Until next time, peace.